I also spoke earlier with 20 year old Daniel Hernandez. He is the young intern who risked his own life to help comfort Congresswoman Giffords and who may have in turn helped save her life. You heard someone shout gun on Saturday at this event. Most people would run the other way. You ran toward that noise. Um, just because of the, the case that was going on, um, with it being a congresswoman, and I knew that if there was a gunman that she would likely be a target, I wanted to make sure that if she or anyone around her were, was injured that I provided whatever assistance I could until the EMTs could get in. And, and lucky for everyone that you were there on scene because you've been, been interning with her office for, what, five days when this happened? Yeah. I've known the congresswoman for a few years. I originally interned for her congressional campaign in 2008, and I did some work with her campaign in 2010, um, but I had the, the great pleasure of being accepted as an intern in December. Um, and I started this week. And, and you mentioned, too, you wanted to help anyone else who was around. You've gone through the training to be a certified nurse's assistant. So when you see everything that's happening, you run over there to protect the congresswoman and anyone else. What was the first order of business for you based on that training? Um, when I got to where, the, where I assumed the shooting started, um, the first thing I tried to do was try and assess um, who was still alive. Um, so trying to check for pulses, trying to see who was still breathing. Um, I was able to check two or three people before I noticed that the congresswoman had been hit. Um, once I had noticed that the congresswoman had been hit, it then became my top priority, not because of her position, but because of the severity of her wounds because she had been shot in the head. And so, so when you're looking at that, you're assessing it, I understand you're cradling her in your lap. Um, when, when I first got to the congresswoman, she was slumped over, but in the position she was in, um, there was some danger of asphyxiation just because of the way she was laying in, in, in her own blood. Um, so I wanted to make sure that at first we could get to her in a position so that she could breathe properly. Um, and once she was propped up against my chest so she could breathe properly, applying pressure to the wound to make sure that we could stem the blood loss. And a lot of people have said your quick thinking, propping her up, everything you did may have helped save her life. Yeah. Plenty of people are calling you a hero uh, and have been for the last couple of days. How does that feel? Um, I, I, I think it's a little strange to be calling me a hero because the, the things that I did was a one-off. Um, however, the real heroes are people like Congresswoman Giffords who have dedicated their lives to public service and helping others. Are, are you in, in touch at all with her family? Um, I spoke briefly with her husband and her sister um, just to let them know what had happened on the day of the shooting. Um, but I'm giving them some space as as I think everyone should be. Yeah. When you, when you were looking at that on the day that this all happened and as you're sitting there with this woman that you respect and admire so much, cradling her in your lap, doing everything you can to keep her alive, did you have any sense of what was going on around you? Um, once I saw the condition that the congresswoman was in, I kind of started tuning everything else out and my singular focus became tending to her. Mm -hmm. And when and when help did arrive? What, what happened next and, and what was um, your role there? Once the emergency services came in, I kind of let them take over for the, the medical side because that's their job and that's their expertise. Um, but then I knew that my job was to make sure that we were taking care of her emotional um, well-being, so I started trying to let her know that I was still there, okay. making sure that she knew that someone was with her and she wasn't alone. And was she was she responsive? I mean, did she know that you were speaking to her? Did she know what was happening? Um, she was alert and conscious the entire time, and the way that she was communicating was through hand squeezes. So I would ask her a question, and she would she would answer by squeezing my hand. Were her eyes open at this point? Uh, her eyes were not open. Her eyes were closed the entire time, but just those squeezes. The squeezes let us know that she was still conscious. It is, it is quite a story. We appreciate you sharing it with us, and I know a lot of people are grateful that you were there to help on that day. Jenny Hernandez, thanks. Thank you. And just some incredible tales of people who jumped into action, Chris, and, and really helped prevent further tragedy. The stories are inspiring, and they are also heartbreaking. We'll have more of that to come from here in Tucson just ahead. But back to you now in New York, Chris. Erica, thank you. You talk about a composed 20-year-old, though, Mr. Hernandez. Unbelievable.